Get it later. Yeah. All right, guys. Nice and quiet. <sighs> How is everything, Lori? We are ready. All right. Well, I'm excited to see you guys again. Um, we had a good week here in Gainesville. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, the exterior stone was applied to the house. The exterior of the home is starting to look really nice and pretty. So I'm going to show you how the stone was made and then also how they applied it to the house. So let's share my screen. Okay. I'm going to show you some pictures first and then I have some video for you. So you can see this is what the house, um, what it looks like. The stone is kind of partially applied to this part of the house. Um, we give the stone, um, the stone workers a plan that shows them where the stone is going to be on the house. And then in their factory, they make enough stone and they bring it to the site and they go ahead and apply it. They built this little scaffold here so they could reach um, the higher parts. You can see this is what the stone looks like before it's put on the house. It's um, in these little bricks and they fill up the wheelbarrow to bring it closer. And this actually isn't real stone. It's not rocks that you would find in the ground. And I'm going to show you how they make it. It's actually fake stone made of concrete and um, they make it out of molds. And I'll show you and they put different colors on it to make it look like real stone. This is the mix that they use. Um, it's like a cement sticky mix to stick the stone to the house. See here the wheelbarrows filled up with the different um, the different pieces. And this is where they mix up the cement, similar to how they mix up the cement for the other parts of the home. They have um, you know the, the cement and water and some sand. Here they're building the scaffold. And uh, they're putting on the stone. Um, you can see here in this picture, he's got a little chisel in his hand. And the way the stone fits on the house, it's not an exact science. It's kind of like piecing together a puzzle. So they have to look at the stone and the dip. There's a bunch of different shapes and colors, and they want to make sure that they vary the shapes and the colors. And in in order to get it to fit and meet the edges, sometimes they'll have to chisel off pieces to get it to fit nicely. And uh, this is what the house looks like after all the stone is applied. So you can see they put stone on this whole area here and then also here on either side of the garage. Now all this dirt that you see in front of the house is because they dug out dirt in order to pour um, the sidewalk. And they're going to do that next week. But you can just kind of see here what else is going on. All this dirt they dug out and they put um, wood form boards that way when they pour the concrete for the sidewalk next week, it stays in that nice uh, rectangular shape. And we'll go over that more next week. So this is what it looks like finished. And now I'm going to show you some more videos. Um, but you can see this particular style is called ledge, and it has all these different jagged shapes, and there's um, some different kind of like orange, white, and black colors. And when we order the stone, they have different um, they have different shapes of stone that you can get, and also different colors. So we try to make sure that it matches the color, matches the roof and the wall paint. And we let the customer usually pick the style. And I'll show you some different styles as well. Let me pull up a video here. You see they're throwing up the stone up on the scaffold so that way they don't have to stop working once uh, they put it on. They want to make sure they get enough so they don't have to come down um, to get more once they get started. And then, oh, 
I know I got more. Then you should hear they're mixing the cement. You see, he, he, uh, he's placing it on, seeing if it's going to fit, just like a puzzle piece. And then once he decides where he wants it to be, he's going to go ahead and put some, um, he's going to go ahead and put some, like, sticky cement behind it to get it to stick to the wall. And they do that all up and down the areas of the house. And then... Got some more videos here. And this is the website for the stone company that we order from. And you can see the stone comes in all different shapes. And also it comes in a lot of different colors too. So like I said, we make sure the color matches the paint. And it also matches the roof color. And we like to have the different shapes so all the houses look different. So we let um, our customers pick out the different shapes. Um, these are some of the shapes you can see. Um, there's uh, some more shapes here. They have a lot of different options to choose from, which is really nice. Now, I told you that these, um, this stone is not real stone. It's supposed to look like real stone, but it's actually made out of a lightweight concrete and it has some different color pigment on top of it. So right now I'm going to show you how they make that in the factory. So I've got a video here. Um, and this isn't the same company that makes our stone, but it's a very similar process. So what they first do is they get real rocks, so that way it looks like the real rocks. So these are actually real stones, and they put them on, you know, a board. They measure them to make sure they're the right sizes and they're spaced out evenly. Then they trace them onto the board. Then they drill holes in the board so that way when they make the mold, air can escape and there's no bubbles. Now they glue the stones back to the board so they don't move when they put the mold on. Now to make sure the mold doesn't get into the gaps, because rocks are not completely smooth, they fill in the gaps with, um, with a caulk uh, to make sure that uh, it doesn't mess up the mold. So they're rolling out the caulk, and kind of like it's kind of like a putty, and they're filling in the gaps. Then they wipe it clean so it doesn't affect the texture of the stone. Next, they um, because rocks are porous, they have little holes in them because it's a natural material from the ground. They seal it so that way when they're making the mold, the mold doesn't go into the little holes or seep into the stone. So that's a sealer. Next, they make a board so when they fold, they pour the mold, it um, you know doesn't come out of the edges and it's in a nice rectangular shape.
Now, once you make a mold, you don't have to make it again. You can reuse it over and over again. So they do this for the first time, and then they have them um, um, to keep on reproducing. You see on the, cra the cracks now of the box. Now he's going to spray um, the ed he's going to spray all the surfaces so that way the mold won't stick and it'll come off nice and easily after it dries. He's making sure it's nice and, and uh, even. Okay, so now he's taking the dimensions of the box and he's taking the dimensions of the stone. And what he's doing is he's calculating the volume of how much of how much of the um, molding liquid he has to pour in to the um, into this box. So he's calculating the volume. This is a little book he uses to help him calculate the volume. He does some calculations to determine the, how much he needs. The volume, if you guys have learned that yet, it's length times width times height. But then they have to subtract the different stone materials that are in there. So he does some different math, and then they pour it in. And this is like a rubber material, it's like a liquid rubber. Ian, I'm sure this is where you took up Thank you. Can you let it dry overnight? Now they'll use that to make the fake rocks. Yeah, and so they make molds in different shapes and patterns. It'll just pour in, and it'll look like a fake rock. It'll look like a rock. And and then um, here you can see this is another mold. So you think there's real rock on the house? And what they do is they pour concrete, and the concrete has different pigment colors to it to make it the different colors they want. And they rub it. This is now concrete that they're rubbing in that rubber mold that they already made and dried. It's cheaper than getting real rocks. It's cheaper, it's easier, and it's faster. So think about how many stones you need to cover one of our houses, and we're doing like 20 houses, you know, maybe over a couple of weeks, it would take a long time to get all those stones naturally. So this is easy and it kind of looks like the stone. You can pick out the different colors and patterns. And you can see they shake it and then it comes out and it looks like how you guys saw um, here. They fill in all the gaps with like a dark grout. Um, so you can see it's got a really nice texture and some different colors to it. And um, I'll show you also quickly because you see all the dirt here from the sidewalk. Next week they're going to go ahead and make the sidewalk. But you can see this truck we saw last week was moving the dirt. And uh, you can see this, they have this nice and formed up. This will be where the sidewalk in front of the house is. But I'll go over more of that next week. Um, so, do you guys have questions about the stone? Yeah, I was just asking, Laura, how many you have? Because we, I mean, we have brick in front of our house. I guess it was made the same way. I guess it wasn't really brick. Yeah, it's made the same way. Um, it's just a different pattern, and they color, you know, the pigments that they put on it. Um, they'll do different color combinations to make it look how you want. Okay. Do they paint the stones? 
That's a good question. It's actually not paint. It's a special pigment. It's almost like a powder that they put in the concrete in the mold. So when the concrete dries and it comes out of the mold, it has that, that color in it already. Are you almost finished with the house? Yeah, we're very close to being finished. Next week you'll see inside the shelving is going up in the cabinets, um, the sliding glass doors, light fixtures, all the finishing touches. So it's very close to being finished. Are, are they going to cover the whole outside of the stone? Is that the question? Yeah, but you you can cover the outside of the house the whole entire surface with stone. You can even put stone inside the house. Like when we have a fireplace, we'll put that same stone to cover the fireplace. But we um, stone is um, we like to use it in just um, accents. So we like to accent you know certain walls and make like a nice pattern. So we'll give the stone guys. We'll tell them exactly where we want it. So you can see they put it on like part of the house. Um, my name is India. Um, why did the guys put me YouTube? Why did the um? Why did you guys put fake stone on the house? What was that? Sorry, I couldn't understand. Um. Why do you put? Why did, why did they put fake stones on the house? Okay, that's a great question. The reason why they put fake stones on the house, there's a couple reasons. One, it's cheaper, so it's less expensive than having to go out and dig up, find, you know, the right type of stone, dig it up, make it the right shape, might not be the right color. It's easier because you can do it right in, you know, your own, they have their own little warehouse, they make the stone. So it's cheaper, it's easier, and it's faster because they can make the stone really fast, whereas if they had to go out and dig, um, you know, and find rocks that were the right shapes and colors, it might take a long time. And also it's lighter, so it's easier to stick up on the wall and keep, um, keep up on the wall for a long time. Hi, my name's Skylar. Do you put a stylus dish on the roof of the house? Can you repeat that? Sorry, I couldn't hear. Do you put a stylus dish on the roof of the house? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, when the homeowners move in, they have a choice. There is cable that is wired underground to the house. So they can choose to use the cable in the house and pay the cable company or if they don't want to pay the cable company that has the cable into the house they can get a satellite and install that as well and that's another way that they can get their TV however some communities have rules and they don't want to see the satellite they don't want when you drive down the street to see the satellites because some people might think that they're ugly so you have to get it approved by the homeowners association which is kind of like it's a group of homeowners in your community and they make certain rules. So they'll prove it and say you have to have it maybe in the back of the house or somewhere hidden from sight. So it's a choice that they have. What inspired you to start to build houses? Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? It's a little hard for me to hear today. What inspired you to start to build houses? Okay, that's a really good question too. Well, I was actually influenced um, by my boyfriend Alex. He started the company when I was still in college. So it was, it was his dream to start this home building business, um, something that could be like a family business that he could be his own boss and really make a beautiful home that's affordable for people so that way they can live in a really beautiful home that they can afford. So it was his dream. He started the company, and then when I graduated school, I saw how great it was, um, so I wanted to join him and work with him, too. So he kind of inspired me to build the houses. Blake? Hi, my name is Blake, and do you use 
Do you use water for to make the bricks? Do they use water to make the bricks? They there is water mixed in with the concrete. So water is mixed in with the concrete to make kind of like a wet mud. And when that hardens, it becomes the stone. So yes, water is used definitely, um, definitely in the beginning. So that way, it could be um, the water makes it so that way the mud can easily move into the mold and and uh, and take the shape of those stones. Hi, my name is Jada. Do you? Why do you have to fill in the cracks before you make the mold? Well, that, that's a good question because when you make the mold, you don't want the rubber seeping into the cracks because then when you when the mold comes up, it's gonna have um it's gonna have rubber in places that you don't want it to. So it might have like um like a layer on top where the stone was, or it might go down in places. It just It'll make the mold less um, less smooth and less. It won't look as much like the stone. So you want to make sure you fill in all the gaps so that way it just creates the rubber where you want it to be. Ian. Um, my name is Ian. How much does the house cost? The one that they're building now. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, the houses. Um, they range in price. They start around um, this particular home. I think starts around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And when someone comes to buy the house, they can pick different options. So you could pick the flooring, the stone on the outside, the lighting, different things in the house, which might make the house more expensive. Um, and then also where the house is located. Some Lots, which is the land that the house is on, might be more valuable than others because maybe they're larger or they might have a nice view. Like you might not, you might have like some pretty trees behind it or like a little lake. So that also affects the value of the house. Ryan? I'm Ryan. Is there a rule of how many trees you have? That is a great question. There is a rule. Um, when we build the house, we have to clear all the trees underneath where, where the house is going to be built because obviously you can't have a tree growing through your house. So we have to cut all those trees down, and those are actually taken and they're recycled in like a special plant that you know comes and gets the trees. And when the home is finished, which you'll see, we plant new trees around the front. And there actually is a rule in this community that you have to plant a specific type of tree in between the sidewalk and the road because they want when the community gets a little bit older to have a nice canopy of trees when you drive down the street. So there is a rule we have to plant a very specific type of tree in that very specific location. And then in addition to that, when you're developing the community, because they know you're going to be removing a certain amount of trees, they make you designate certain conservation areas where there are a lot of trees. So they might make you plant some more or just um, not build in certain areas and make those special like parks where the trees stay and cannot be cut down. Okay, um, Lori, we have Eloisa here and she um, drew something this week. She wants to share it with you. Okay. I, um, I made a, a map a map of my home. Okay, oh wow. I'd love to see it. Hello. You keep it straight. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is so great. How did you do that? Did you have um did you take a tape measure or you did it from your memory? How did you I did it from a memory. That is great. I would love if you can um, take a picture of that and maybe email it to me. So I could do that. I could. I, uh, Eloisa, you could actually could take a picture of it at home yeah. and email it to me, and I'll email it to Lori. Mm -hmm. She'll hang it in her office. Yeah, I think that's so great. <laughs> See, we inspire aspiring minds. What's happening next week, Lori? 
Well, next week you'll see the driveway, the um, sidewalk being poured. I'll tell you more about how they do that. Um, inside, you'll see the garage doors installed, and also um, the electricians come back and they start hanging up the light fixtures, chandeliers, fans, stuff like that. All right, we look forward to next week. Um, everybody, say goodbye to Lori. Have a good weekend.